96 ZRT. Uh, picked this up from a friend of a friend. Oh, coming on a couple years ago now, I guess. Um, fairly decent shape for the age of it and what it is. Um, ran pretty well last year. Brought it down, set it up for the ice, and brought it down to a race. And took off led out of led the whole shot into the first uh two corners into a straightaway got halfway through the straightaway and it died just flat died and nothing no spark and due to my ever present shit show around here uh, this is the first time I'm getting to it, so it's been almost a year since I've touched it at all or heard it run, but finally getting back to it. Um, been scratching my head. I did get another ZRT, a 2000 that I uh, sold some parts off of. I still got Coil's CDI unit. Um, I actually got the complete motor, stator, all that stuff. Just worried maybe I had a stator issue. Um, but did all the testing by the by the book. Ah, there it is. By the book, checked everything out that way. Um, get good, getting good numbers that way. But still no spark. Ran into another issue where I bypassed the fuel shut off, and I ended up with a crankcase full of fuel. That's an issue for another video, though. Um, so. Finally did some digging around and thinking on this and remembered that the when I got the machine, the wires for the, what do they call them, magnetic safety switches on the carbs had been clipped. Kind of a head scratcher. Um, talked to a few people and everybody says, oh yeah, that's an easy bypass. Well... If you look at my wire harness that is melted and has wires exposed and is just a mess, um, might be a little more difficult of a bypass for me, but I think uh, I'm going to work through a little denial and error on it and see if I can't figure out which uh, round peg I gotta shove in a square hole to make this thing breathe life again. So it looks like the three wires I got coming to this are the black with white stripe, uh, all black, and then I guess the temp sensor wire is uh, red with a white stripe. I'm gonna find out if we can eliminate the temp sensor. Um, like to live a little dangerously, so maybe we'll see if we get rid of that. Um, pretty sure all it does is turn on a light anyway. Um, if it gets hot and melts down, it gets hot and melts down, I guess. But it's just a stock motor. There's no reason. Stock motor still has the oil pump. N nothing real fancy going on here, so it really shouldn't be getting that hot. But um, I'll probably change my mind and wuss out and leave it in, but wires all melted up and exposed and, and I don't know, it's in pretty tough shape, so it might take a little convincing for me to splice that, but while I'm at it, it might not take that long. Um, I'm going to just check the book, try to figure out myself if I can. You get every Tom, Dick, and Harry on the internet on the forums telling you eight different ways to Sunday and how to bypass this crap, but basically I just got to figure out what do I have to do with these two wires um, in order to bypass those switches so that the correct connection is made and that this thing will just run. With the amount of exposed wire and crap I got going on with this melted rat's nest, you know, I'm hoping it's as easy as I can clip the two wires and tie them together and everything should be hunky-dory. Now, I'm realistic and know it's never that simple, but maybe it's 
clip the two wires and cap the ends and don't have to worry about it after that. Um, main thing with this is I want to figure out what the right answer is and give you guys the right answer so you got a quick easy way to reference rather than trying to dig through forums where nobody knows what the hell they're talking about. I'm not going to claim to know what the hell I'm talking about but I'm at least not going to fill you full of bullshit if, if I can uh, avoid it. So just for you guys' reference this is a carb off that machine that I said I parted out in the uh, the safety switches are still on the side of this carb. That's with a two wire plug, and then a small plastic deal screwed to the side of the carburetor is. Um, wanted to do some more thinking through on this. I want to know how that magnet switch is supposed to 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 work. I'll show you guys the book. Um, it shows the I guess the switch in an open condition. And I'm just trying to figure out what what is the proper, uh, I guess, condition. We're just going to do a simple continuity test. So um, these carbs do still have the spring on the slide. So if the slide's in the down position like it would be at idle, if I use my voltmeter and just do a continuity test, I'm not getting a tone, so when it's when the carb is closed or at idle, um, I do not have continuity. So what that tells me is the magnet in here, when it senses that slide down, it pulls that into a closed contact condition. Okay. I'm not exactly sure what that's going to mean for not having these switches on the machine or exactly how to bypass them, but it at least tells me what a normal uh, starting condition would be for them. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just prop this slide open. and check for continuity just to make sure that the switch itself is working. So I get a tone there that tells me once um, once that slide is moved up to a certain position I'm not sure if it's closing it because the, the slide moved up into its location. I, I guess that's exactly what it's telling me is when the slide moves up past a you know, that's probably not a wide open throttle condition, but past an idle condition, um, that that safety switch then closes the connection. What that doesn't tell me, um, since by the diagram it looks like this is hooked directly to like the, the engine kill switch, what that's doing, because um, I guess when they're on, just because you hold the sled wide open it doesn't kill your ignition necessarily but it must do something I'm not sure I'm not seeing where it's connected to like the CDI and it's making a decision inside of there somehow but anyway we know when at wide open throttle or even at I guess we could call that half throttle or better um, we have continuity but when we're at a closed throttle condition, we do not. So the other portion of the circuit is actually the throttle safety in, on the throttle itself. Um, there's a switch in here they call the high speed switch. So we saw that when the carbs are at idle, there's no continuity. Um, but if the, if the kill switch is off um, and the high speed switch is not depressed there is continuity in the system if if you're plugged in um, to the carb switches now if you're not plugged into the carb switches uh, there won't be and you won't have any spark that's the the situation I'm running into um, obviously if your your kill switch is off you won't have any spark um, the the safety portion of it is is once that switch closes 
and or uh, that would be actually opening the circuit but the carbs the slides and the carbs rising up and um, reacting with the magnet switch in, in the in the carbs themselves that then you saw when I slid the slide up that then we had continuity so it's it's just switching between the two to keep the circuit closed so that you have um, continuity because this particular machine is a normally closed um, system uh, I get a little messed up because the fire cats we run are normally open so say on the key switch if you just pulled the two leads off the back of the key switch um, barring any other issues you should then have have power through the system have spark to your your plugs um, whereas this system that actually opens the circuit and breaks it um, something that comes with these machines and I just found some laying around but through talking this out um, figured out these jumpers are actually for those um, plugs or wires for the carb switches uh, you just jump that I had to make shift one um, but now now I have spark again um, with the engine stop off um, if I was to uh, well it wouldn't matter because I got the the uh, the jumpers in line now but if I didn't have the jumpers in line and I was to hold the throttle wide open it would actually cut spark um, I, the, the whole point of the safety thing is, is you don't have an engine that'll start when um, a carb or the carbs are at a wide open throttle position so that you don't fire it up and have the thing take off on you um, it is a safety thing so I don't recommend bypassing it like I'm going to um, since I put these jumpers on and have spark again I'm actually probably since these are a pretty gnarly mess I'm gonna just go back a little ways to where the two wires are kind of clean clip that tie them together and or solder them together cleanly and bypass the uh, the carb safety switch side of it um, just to simplify this a little bit I do have a tether switch installed so I'm not too worried about the machine running away because best practice is to have a tether switch and when you have a tether switch to put it on so to just show you guys kinda of what we've been working on um, down here on the bottom right is the manual key switch I actually changed that out this uh, sled when I got it didn't have anything connected to the manual key switch they had those wires just tied off I since um, use those two wires it's your brown white wire coming from your engine or well really it'd be coming from the the stator harness and then the black red which the black red runs into what we'll talk about in a second but in place of the key switch that's where I have the uh, the normally closed tether switch installed so when the tethers um, put on it closes XY if you come down here to the notes again sorry you guys might not be able to read this very well but it says key switch to con contact closures as follows off none on XY you can just see there XY so it's saying that closes the loop to um, have the igni ignition on so no key switch but we have a tether so with the tether installed this portion of the loop is closed if we follow the the black red portion of that up comes up to the connector that's on your uh, on your handlebar where that plugs in ties into your emergency stop switch um, on your handlebar and then here's that high speed switch so that's what's in the in the throttle itself and that's what works with the carb switches over here um, so when that opens up the carb switch is actually closed in order to keep that circuit closed 
the part of the harness that you saw on mine was melted is actually this black wire coming again out of the the four plug um, stator harness if I follow the black wire up it comes to this plug where then it turns into um, a black red that jumps onto itself um, another black red and then actually turns into a black white and those three connections there coincide with the three connections for your three carbs um, since I don't have those really all I'm doing is tying it's going to be the black here to the black white there um, which is just then completing that circuit. It's doing the same thing that three jumpers in the, these three positions would do. Um, so then that part of the circuit's always closed. So as long as um, you have you have the uh, emergency stop in place, we, we shouldn't have any issues. I'm going to test it here just in a second to make sure by holding open the high speed switch and making sure that doesn't mess anything up but since there's no connection there anymore it really shouldn't um, because with this with the emergency stop closed excuse me yeah well it would be closed but in a run position you should still have a complete circuit all right so i guess the takeaways for from tonight's video are 96 is what this particular one is, um, ZRT, um, the, the manual I have is for 97 but it appears that the harness and everything works the same, uh, they probably rinse and repeat to uh, a few other models but closed, uh, normally closed ignition system so uh, you have to have a complete circuit in order to have spark and in order to run. Um, the, the throttle safety switch on the throttle itself as well as the magnetic switches and the carbs work together as a two switch system and when they're working properly they keep the, the, the circuit closed so that your machine stays running if, if you have an abnormal basically two abnormal conditions in, in, in the circuit it breaks the, the connection and kills the motor um, I didn't have spark what I boiled it down to is I didn't have the jumpers in place of the magnetic switches and I didn't have the magnetic switches hooked up. Um, it's strange because it, the machine ran last year but then quit out of nowhere but it's not strange after showing you guys how chewed up my harness was. I think it was pretty easy to get some connection somewhere in a frayed wire that was allowing the machine to run and then something moved in that wire and, and broke that connection. So I'm gonna simplify the whole thing by cutting, cutting back to, to two wires, soldering the two together that I know. It's gonna be the black and the black and white that I know need to be connected. Um, I double checked that with those two just connected and um, the, the, throttle, the high speed switch in the throttle safety portion of it, that what they call the high speed switch in the diagram that I showed you. Um, if that is actually open with those two wires tied together, I still have spark. So a little bit risky. I run the risk of if you got a, uh, a slide and a carburetor or slides in all three car. Basically, if you have a stuck throttle, you could still start this machine up and it could take off on you. Kind of a dangerous deal, but um, as I mentioned before with, with my tether switch um, and well, basically just with the tether switch, I'm confident that we, we shouldn't have a safety issue on this machine as so long as um, we keep in mind that anytime you're starting a machine, you got to have your, safe, your tether switch hooked up to yourself. Um, so no big deal. Uh, just bear that in mind whenever you're modifying these safety switches that it could be potentially dangerous. But even though I say I do everything by the book all the time around here, we're not doing this one by the book. Um, we're going to buy pass some stuff and try to go racing with this machine this weekend. So, got another 
thing I got to figure out, I, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I got a case full of, full of fuel. I bypassed my fuel shutoff switch um, and it rode in a trailer a few different times and I suppose the bouncing in the trailer, I don't know if a, uh, a float stuck or maybe I got some junk in a carburetor, but shouldn't be a big deal. I got the carbs on the bench and ready to go through those and make sure they're cleaned up. They got carb kits last year so I'm pretty confident uh, we shouldn't have too much of an issue there. Main thing is going to be putting it back together and getting it running. I hope this helped. If you got questions, reach out. Um, yeah, I'm trying to do the best I can to give you good information. I know how frustrating it can be to search the internet for answers and get on forums when and not know what anybody's talking about. So that's why I try to do a video. I try to walk you through what's going on. If you like what I'm doing, please hit subscribe. Um, shoot me a like. Reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, shoot me a comment on YouTube, however you want to get a hold of me. I'm just here to help. So, thanks for watching.